Hey guys, quick tutorial today. What I'm going to show you is how to apply damage onto objects as well as despawning them from the scene. So let me show what I got so far. As you can see here, we have our vehicle as well as a structure. The structure is currently a static body, meaning that no matter how hard we push, it is not going to move. But if we take a few shots at it, one, two, three, four, and then last shot, five, as you can see, it's converted from a static body into a rigid body. And after a few seconds, it despawns from the scene. So what I'm going to show you is how I did that. And let's get to it. So first things first, let's talk about setup. What we're going to do is do everything from the beginning. So let's double click on our watchtower.gltf. Click on new inherited. And I'm going to right click on the spatial node here and change the type into a static body. The second thing we're going to do is click on the mesh, click on the mesh here and click on create single convex collision and sibling and then drag the cube into the collision shape. Last thing we're going to do is right click on the cube, add child node and add animation player, which is going to be our for our despawn fade out effect. After this, we're going to right click on the watchtower and attach a script. As you can see, everything's already been written out, but let's just comment this out and let's do everything from the beginning. So the first two variables we want to uh, set is our current hit points, which is going to equal 10, our max hit points, which is also going to equal 10 for if, for example, you want to repair the tower or something like that. And then the last value is going to be a flag, which is going to be our despawn, which is going to equal to false. After that, we're going to be putting a function physics process and we're going to be doing the following code. So if the current hit points is less than or equal to zero and your despawn flag is currently set to false, set that despawn flag to true. And this is where it gets a bit complicated. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to be converting our static body into a rigid body. So to do that, we need to create the static body placeholder. So to do that, it's going to be, let's just put it as a comment, create rigid body. We're going to create a variable called body, which is going to equal to rigid body dot new. So if we visualize this, uh, basically what this means is that it's creating a new rigid body within the scene. And we're going to be attaching a mass onto it. So that way our rigid body has a bit of weight, which we're going to set to 200. And we're going to add this newly created rigid body as a child to ourself. So if you visualize this for a second, what that means is basically, um, if you go to a watchtower over here, we're basically adding a rigid body into our tree. So this is basically what the code is doing. The rigid body is now existing as a child within the tree. After that, what's going to happen is we're going to transfer all this into our rigid body. So to do that, transfer to rigid body. We're going to be getting the collision shape, which is going to be our tower is equal to get node collision shape, meaning that everything below the collision shape is going to be transferred. Remove child tower. So basically what this means is when it comes to reparenting your nodes, you have to make sure that it doesn't currently have a parent. So what this is doing, this is taking a collision shape and it's dragging it out of the equation. So that way we can reinsert it back into the tree under a new parent. So body, which is the rigid body that we set before, dot add child, tower, and then body dot set as top level is equal to true. So what this means is we're taking the collision shape out of the static we are reinserting it back into the rigid body, and then we're setting that rigid body as the root of our tree. Yeah. 
So that's pretty much everything we need for that part. So what we're going to do now is we're going to be creating the despawn animation. So to do that, we're just going to click on our animation player over here. And we're going to be going to our animation tab over here. Click on it. Click on new. And we're going to name our new animation as despawn. So after this, what we're going to do is we're just going to click on our mesh itself. And if you go to the materials tab on our surface one, we're going to click on this. And then we're going to click on our key for the transparent. And then we're going to click on our color in the albedo. So what that means is at the very beginning, our transparency is set to false and our color is as it is because within our color, we have a alpha channel, which is basically how uh, our opacity is going to be. So from here, what we're going to do, we're going to extend our time of the animation to 10 seconds. And we want to have the alpha take effect maybe in the first two seconds. So in the two second mark over here, we're going to click on the transparency flag and we're going to add it as a keyframe. And then we're going to go to our color and add this as a keyframe as well. And then we're going to drag it to the very end of the 10 seconds. We're going to click on our color, set our alpha to zero, and then click on the key to add it as a keyframe. So as you can see, if we drag it back to the very beginning, what happens is the first two seconds, nothing happens, but on the two second mark, transparency starts to take effect and then it fades out into nothingness, just like that. So now that's done, we're ready to insert the animation into our code. So to do this, we click on our script. Let's just remove all this. Let's put it as despawn. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to get our animation player. So to do that, body.getNode, and we're going to type in our node path, which is collision shape slash Q slash animation player dot play despawn. Once the animation is playing, we're going to wait until the very end of the animation. So we're going to use a yield function. Same thing again, get node, collision shape, cube, animation player, animation finished, and then Q free. So what this means is we're getting our animation player, we're getting it to play our despawn animation. We're waiting until the very end of the animation before we remove ourselves from the scene. So now that's said and done, what we're going to do, we're going to go back to our world. We're just going to make sure that our tower is properly placed. And we're just going to test it out. So to test it out, we're just going to add one more line of code into our script. We'll insert it up here. If input dot is action just press space, current hit is equal to zero, just so we can test it out. So press play. And then press spacebar. As you can see, it despawns itself from the scene. And once it's gone, able to drive through like it was never there. So the very last thing we want to do is we want the bullets to be the one taking away the hit points of the tower. So to do this, let's just remove this line of code. We're going to be adding our watchtower into a group. So to do that, click on our watchtower and go to node. As you can see here, if we click on groups, we'll add a group called enemies and then click on add. As you can see here, the icon shows that our node is in one group and the group is enemies. And after that, we're just going to save the scene and go to our bullet. So our script is very similar to what we did before. The only difference is that we're doing a different check. Our check is if our body is in the group enemies, we're going to be subtracting our body's hit points by our damage amount. As you can see in the top here, we set our damage to 2. And once it hits, we're just going to queue free our bullet from the scene. So if all set and good, everything should be working as intended.
We aim at the tower. Two, three, four, five. And then the tower despawns from the scene. Like that. So I'm actually going to do one last thing, um, just to tweak the rigid body uh, physics a bit. So click on your watchtower. Uh, make sure that the origin point is in the very center of the tower. So to do this, just click on the collision shape, drag it down, so that way everything is in the center. Save the scene, go to your world, make sure that it's not in the floor, <laughs> press play. And so what this means is everything is back to as it was in the beginning. Currently it's a static body. Shoot at it five times, two, three, four, and then last hit, five. It becomes a rigid body that eventually despawns. And that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching. I just want to apologize for the delay. I've been pretty busy. But if you have any suggestions or have any comments, just feel free to let me know and I'll look into it and we'll go from there. Thank you so for yeah, thank you so much for watching and have a great day.